We're doing an example of Kirchhoff's laws, and in this example, we want to solve for the current that's going through each one of the branches here. In doing Kirchhoff's laws, you want to apply two different laws, two different rules. First rule is the junction rule. Number one, we want to apply the junction rule. So first we want to identify where the junctions are so that we know where to actually apply this rule. I see two junctions, two places where the current can split off. Junction number one and junction number two. And I'm going to write my currents around junction number one. I can see that I have some current that can go into this junction. And I just randomly chose that I want current going into this junction from this position. So I can draw the direction that my current goes in this route, and I'm going to call that current number one. So that's the current that I have chosen to be going in to this junction. You can see my arrow going in. Now uh, I need current in the other junctions, current in the other parts of uh, the circuit. So I can have a current that's going out. I'm going to call this current 2, and I'm going to trace my current 2 all the way around so that it's going in this part of the circuit. I know the direction of my current, and I'm going to call that, as I said, current number 2. And then in this middle part, I have some current. I'm going to say that current's going away, so I have a current going in this middle loop, uh, segment. I'm going to call that I3. So now I have three currents, and I need to use the junction rule to write where all those currents are going. I have a current, total current, that's going into this junction, and I'm going to call that I1. And the current that's leaving that junction is equal to I2 plus I3. And I can see that very clearly with all my arrows. I can see I1 right here is going into my junction. I can see I2 is going out of my junction. And I can see I3 is also going out of my junction. So I1 is in plus equals I2 plus I3 going out. So there's my junction rule for this particular problem. Now if I want to do the second, the, the, the second aspect of a Kirchhoff's Law problem, I want to do the loop rules. So I want to draw loops around my circuits. I'm going to choose my first loop to be this internal loop. I'm going to go from this 12, from this negative side of the 12 volt battery to the positive side, and then I'm going to loop all the way around this right side of my circuit. So there's my loop, and there's the direction of my loop. To write the loop rule for this particular situation, Here's my loop. I start at 12 volts. I can see I'm starting at 12 volts. I'm jumping from the negative to the positive, so here I have a positive 12 volts. As I keep going up through my loop, I'm going up through my loop, and I'm going in this direction through my 1 ohm resistor, and if I look at the direction my current's going, my current is also going up through this resistor. So since my loop is going up and my current is going up, they're going the same direction and I have a negative in my Kirchhoff's Law loop. So I have a negative current 1 that's going through the 1 ohm resistor. And I keep following my loop around, my loop's coming up, my loop's going to the left through this 3 ohm resistor, the same way that my current is going. Same direction as current, so I have a negative. A negative I1 times the 3 ohm resistor. And then I take a turn and I'm going down through this middle portion. I'm going down through this loop. My current is going down, so I'm going the same direction as my current. So my current times resistance to the 5 ohm resistor is going to be negative because they're going the same direction. So minus I3 times 5. And then I continue my loop. I'm going down again, going down through the 1 ohm resistor in the same direction that the current goes. Current is also going down, so I have a negative again, minus I3 times 1. 
and then I look at my loop. I'm start I'm coming down. I'm hitting the positive terminal of a battery. I need to jump down to a lower voltage, down to the negative. So I need to subtract four volts. So this is going to be minus four volts. And then I follow my loop around and end up right back where I started. So that is going to be my completed loop equal to zero. Now my second loop. Second loop we will draw. around the entire outside perimeter. So I'm going to start at this negative terminal, I'm going to jump up to the positive side of the battery, and then I'm going to loop all around the outside of my entire circuit. All the way around and end up right back where I started. So I can write my loop again, my loop for this. I'm starting at the negative side of the 12 volt battery, jumping up to the positive side, so that's going to be positive 12 volts. I can follow my loop around. I'm coming up through my 1 ohm resistor that's going the same direction that my current is going. So since direction of the loop and current is the same, I subtract my current 1 times the 1 ohm resistor that I'm going through. And I keep following this loop around. And I'm going to go down through this 8 ohm resistor. And that's the same direction that my current is going. Since they're the same direction, I subtract minus I2 times my 8 ohm resistor um, and it looks like I missed something so, so let me let me rewind short uh, so I'm going through this I, I went through this 1 ohm resistor I keep coming up and I'm going through this 3 ohm resistor now. I can't forget that 3 ohm resistor. My loop is going to the left. My current is going to the left. They're going the same direction, so I need to subtract. I need to subtract I1 times 3 ohms. And we're back on track. And we keep coming around. And I'm coming down. I'm coming down through my 0 ohm resistor. I'm going the same direction as my current. So I subtract, again, I2 second current times the 8 ohm resistor and then I keep following this around and I end up right back where I started so that's going to be a complete loop and it's going to be equal to zero so now I have three equations and I have three unknowns I have my junction rule I have two loops and now come the, so that's all the physics and now I need to start doing algebra to find what I1 I2 and I3R. So here I've just rewritten all the equations that we've already found and we need to combine these so we need to use this to find I1, I2, and I3 so we know this relationship between I1, I2, and I3. I1 is equal to I1, I2 plus I3. I also know this first loop and I know the second loop. Now I can simplify these loops because two of them, this loop has two I1 terms. So I can combine those, and this loop has two I3 terms. I can combine those. So I can try to simplify this equation a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, my second loop has two I1s. I can combine those two I1s and try to make this look a little bit more clean. So that's going to be my goal now, make this look more clean. Flip ahead. And let's let's simplify these things by combining. So I want to combine my I1s together and my I3s together. So let me do that. I end up with 12 minus 1I1 minus 3I1 is equal to minus 4 times I1. And then I combine my I3 times 5 minus I3 times 1, and I have minus 6 times I3 and then minus 4 is equal to 0. Here I see I have more things that I can combine. I can combine the 12 volts and the 4 volts together. And I do that, and I end up with 8 minus 4 times I1 minus 6 times I3 is equal to 0. And what I can do, I can simplify this a little bit more and I can bring my 
uh, unknowns over to one side. So I'm going to add these two guys to the opposite side. So that's going to get rid of my negatives if I add them over here and give me that 8 is equal to 4 times I1 plus 6 times I3. And I'm going to circle that and we're going to repeat that uh, equation later on. So I've simplified my first loop as much as I possibly can. Let me do the same thing with my second loop. So I have I1 times 1 and I1 times 3. I can combine those. So I get 12 minus I1 times 1 minus I1 times 3 is negative 4 times I1. And then I still have my minus 8I2. And that's going to be equal to 0. And I can again, I can add these two unknown parts over to my other side. So I'm going to do that and get 12 is equal to 4 times I1 plus 8 times I2. And if I look, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in what I know for I1. My goal here is to get rid of variables that I don't know. And I know how I1 is related to I2 and I3. I know I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I'm using these three equations, the two loops and the junction rule, to uh, narrow myself down to, to two equations and two unknowns instead of three. So now I have 8 is equal to 4 times I2 plus I3, where I'm just plugging in I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Everywhere I see an I1, I plug in an I2 plus I3, and then plus my 6 I3. I'm going to distribute this 4 into the parentheses, so I get 8 is equal to 4 times I2 plus 4 times I3. Let me go ahead and correct that up here. That's I3 plus 6 times I3. And now I end up with 8 is equal to 4 times I2 plus 10 times I3. Where once again, I combined my I3s, my 4 I3 plus 6 I3 to get my 10 I3. And now I have gotten rid of I1 in this equation and have this guy right here. One equation with an I2 and an I3. Now I need to look at my second equation that I got from my loops. So my second loop, I had simplified to 12 equals 4i1 plus 8i2. And once again, I'm going to try to get rid of this i1 by recognizing my junction rule that i1 is equal to i2 plus i3. So I just plug that in anywhere I see an i1. I plug in i2 plus i3. So let me do that here. And we get 12 is equal to 4 times i2 plus i3. Again, I plugged in I2 plus I3 everywhere I see the I1, plus my 8 times I2. And I'm going to distribute this 4 into my parentheses. and get 12 is equal to 4 times I2 plus 4 times I3 plus 8 times I2. And now I have to recognize I have... 4i2 and 8i2, and I can combine those together to get a final equation of 12 is equal to 8i2 plus 4i2 uh, is 12i2 plus 4 times i3. And now I have reduced my three equations and three unknowns to two equations and two unknowns. And I've got my two equations, and I'm stacking them on top of each other, because I'm going to try to add these two together to cancel some stuff so that I can get it down to one single variable that, I, that I'm solving for. So what I do is I recognize that if I were to take this top equation, and let's say I multiply it by a negative 3, 
Let's see what happens. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. So negative 24 volts is equal to 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 times I2 plus 10 times negative 3 is negative 30 times I3. And now, and I imagine that I don't really have this equation anymore. I've now replaced this one with this other guy. And I can take that and I can add these two equations together. So I have negative 24 plus 12 is going to be negative 12. And that's going to be equal to negative 12 I2 plus I2. Those are going to cancel with each other now. That's why I multiplied by the negative 3. I recognized negative 3 times 4 would give me negative 12 and then I could cancel my I2. My I2 would go away. So that's going to be 0 plus negative 30 I3 plus 4 I3 should be negative 26 times I3. And now if I divide both sides by negative 26 I can see that I3 is going to be equal to negative 12 divided by 26, which is, if you hold on a second, I need to calculate it. So uh, I, I went off uh, to my calculator app and calculate and get 0 0.46 amps. So now I know that my I3 is 0 0.46 amps. And I can use that to find all my other currents. So what I'm going to do, I can take this previous equation I had, this 12 volts equals 12 I2 plus 4 I3. And let me rewrite that onto the next page. So here we can see what I had on the previous slide. I have this equation 12 volts is equal to 12 I2 plus 4 I3. I believe that was the second loop that we drew. I did my uh, substitution method so that I could find a system of linear equations and solve for I3. So I found out that I3 is equal to 0.46. And now I can take that and plug it in to my loop. So I plug that in <coughs> and I find 12 volts is equal to 12 times I2 plus 4 times 0 0.46. Okay, now I can do some solving. I can try to get this I2 by itself. So I can do 12 volts minus 4 times 0 0.46 is equal to 12 times I2. And then I divide both of those sides by 12. My 12s cancel over here. And I divide this all by 12. And I get my current, I2, is equal to, and let's pause so I can go calculate it. <coughs> and now I know I2 is equal to 0.85. I know I3 is equal to 0.46. So I can find I1 from my original junction rule. I1 is I2 plus I3. And I can just add these together. So I1 is equal to 0 0.85 amps plus 0 0.46 amps. I add those, and with my handy calculator app, I find I1 is equal to 1.31 amps. And I have my complete answer. Every current, I1 1.31, I2 0.85, and I3 0.46. And I am done.